Today's episode comes to you courtesy of John, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like John, so again, thank you so much. And actually, for today's episode, John's gonna handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch, this is John from the west coast of France. For my deck tech, I would like to see you build around Admiral Beckett Brass, focusing on our, on our rowdy crew with a pirate tribal team. So, Admiral Beckett Brass is a 3-3 human pirate that costs 1 blue, black, red. She has other pirates you control get plus plus one, and at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-lane permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So Admiral Beckett Brass is of course a fantastic pirate tribal commander. First up, obviously an anthem for your pirates is great. I mean, being able to pump your pirates and just get through with more damage, that's fantastic. And speaking of getting through, when you are getting through with those pirates, you are able to take what you want. Uh, I mean, you basically only have to get damage, you know, on one player with three or more pirates and you get to take one of their non-land permanents. So she can especially take advantage of having pirates in the deck that are evasive and quick and aggressive. So we can utilize our aggressive pirate army to get our opponent's best things and to take them out well with our pirates and with their things too. Now when it comes to cards that I am using in this deck, every single card in this deck is going to be less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly build. And as I'm going through the cards in this episode, I'm going to be taking you through different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. And keep in mind, if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And with all that said, let's jump into the cards. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land in the play tent. Next up, we're going to be ramping with some mana rocks as well, including Arcane Signet, which can tap for any of our colors, Talisman of Creativity, which can tap for blue or red and deals one damage to us, and Cold Seal Heart, which enters the battlefield tap, but we get to choose a color and they can tap for that color. Next up, of course, we're also going to be running our Signets too, with Rakdos, Demir, and Izzet, each of which can essentially filter one mana into two of our colors. And finally, we're also going to be ramping with our Diamonds with Charcoal, Sky, and Fire, each of which enters the battlefield tapped and tapped for one of our colors. But actually, we've got some pirates that can help us with ramping as well. And there is one pirate in this deck that stands above the rest, in my opinion, and that is the Golden Pig of this deck, which of course is the number one card out of her 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is... Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Malcolm is a 2-2 Siren Pirate with flying that costs 2 and a blue. He has, whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. So first up, Malcolm is decently low to the ground and importantly, an evasive pirate. And being able to get through on our opponents is of course incredibly important, not just for our commander, but also for Malcolm's trigger as well. Which of course is an incredible trigger. I mean, we've got the potential every single one of our combats to get three treasure tokens. That is a ton of ramp, especially early in the game. And yeah, we can easily get Malcolm down and other pirates down very early in the game as well. So we can be very aggressive, get damage through, get a lot of treasures and steal a lot of things thanks to our commander. So yeah, Malcolm can definitely skyrocket us past our opponents with all those treasures and can provide a lot of value throughout the game. So yeah, Malcolm, you are definitely worthy of the title, Golden Pig. But yet another pirate that can help us make treasure but in a different way is Impulsive Pilferer. It's a very low to the ground pirate that costs a single red mana and when it dies we get a treasure token and we can encore it back out or should I say, you know, three copies of it back out essentially for three in red. But of course with this aggressive pirate build, this isn't our only low to the ground pirate. Because we're also going to be running a lot of evasive pirates that are very low to the ground and quick with cards like Siren Storm Tamer, Spectral Sailor, and Changeling Outcast. Storm Tamer has flying and can be sacrificed to counter target spell or ability that targets a creature we control. Spectral Sailor has flash and flying and we can pay three and a blue to draw a card. And Changeling Outcast, well, is a shapeshifter, but it does have Changeling, so technically it's a pirate, and, you know, including every other creature type, but also it can't block and can't be blocked. So these low to the ground pirates are fantastic to get down early and yeah, be very aggressive with to help get some damage through. And again, to be able to get our commander's trigger very quickly. 
So at two mana, we also have some other pirates that can help get through with Kitesail Freebooter, Skyship Plunderer, and Kitesail Corsair. The Freebooter has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand, and we can choose a non-creature, non only card from it, exile a card until Kitesail Freebooter leaves the battlefield. So this can really throw a wrench into a bone's plans on top of being very low to the ground and aggressive. Next up, there's Skyship Plunder, which has flying, and when it deals combat to a player for each kind of counter target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another kind of counter of that kind. And then Kitesail Corsair doesn't naturally have flying, but when it attacks, it does, and that's really what's important in this deck. Moving on, there's Stormfleet Aerialist, which has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, it comes into play with a plus one counter on it if we attack with a creature this turn. And yeah, this deck is looking to be very aggressive and attack quite often. So we're also going to be running Departed Deckhand, which when it becomes the target of a spell, we have to sacrifice it, but it can't be blocked except by spirits, and, and yeah, spirits not really all that popular of a creature type for the most part, so we can get through on most bones with this. And speaking of that, we can also pay three and a blue and make another target creature not be able to be blocked except by spirits this turn too. Next up, there's Daring Saboteur, which has pay two and a blue and it's unblockable. And if it deals combination to a player, we can draw a card and discard a card. So potential unblockability and looting, what's not to love? Up next, we've got another form of evasion with Carrie Zev Skyship Raider, who has First Strike and Menace. So she can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And when she attacks with a 2-1 red monkey, also attacking, which is just lovely. And speaking of tokens, there's Fathom Fleet Captain, which is a 2-2 with Menace, which when it attacks, we can make more 2-2s with Menace. And then there's Dire Fleet Poisoner, which is a very interesting pirate. It has Flash and Death Touch, which isn't a form of evasion, but it can make it harder to block and actually, you know, make it really hard to swing into as well. And on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate we control gets plus plus one against Death Touch until end of turn. So we can make another one of our creatures deadly too. Next up, we've got some older pirates with Tal Scout and Tal's Explorer. Tal Scout is a simple 1-2 with flying, and Tal's Explorer is a 1-1. One, one. Does say Merchant, but it has actually been eroded, and now it is also a pirate, and also I think actually a scout too. Regardless, it has flying. When it comes into play, basically you look at an opponent's hand. And knowledge is power, so that's never a bad thing. Up next, we've got Stormfleet Sprinter, a 2-2 with haste, and it can't be blocked. And Slippery Scoundrel, also a 2-2, and this one does have Ascend. As long as we've got the City's Blessing, it's going to have Hexproof and Unblockability. And yeah, with the amount of things that we can steal and how quickly we can get things out, getting the City's Blessing is going to be no problem at all. And yeah, of course, we are nowhere near done with our pirates just yet. So next up, we've got some fantastic anthems for our pirates. Come with Corsair Captain, Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, and Captain Vargas Wrath. Corsair Captain has when enters the battlefield, create a treasure token, and other pirates you control get plus almost one. So some temporary mana advantage is lovely with that treasure token, and yeah, pumping our pirates, that's never a bad thing. Speaking of which, there's Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, which has attacking pirates you control get plus two plus zero, so yeah, that can help add up a lot throughout the game. We're planning on being very aggressive and swinging out a lot, so we can dish out a lot of damage with this, you know, on top of our commander's anthem them too. And speaking of our commander, well, really casting our commander can really help with Captain Vargas Wrath. Whenever it attacks pirates, we control the plus plus one until our turn for each time we've cast a commander for the command zone this game. Next up, we also have some creatures that have the potential to become massive themselves with Dire Fleet Captain, Coastline Marauders, and Tarian Muller. Dire Fleet Captain is going to get plus plus one until end of turn for each other attacking pirate whenever it attacks. And again, we're going to be attacking with a lot of pirates and very quickly at that. And then Coastline Marauders is a 0 through a trample, but whenever it attacks, it gets plus 1 to 0 until end of turn for each land defending player controls, which of course throughout the game can add up to be a lot. And we can also Encore back out for 4 red red. And speaking of heavy hitters though, Tori Mauler can hit for a lot. It is a changeling, so again technically a pirate as well. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you put a plus 1 counter on Tori and Mauler. And yeah, with 3 opponents, this can really add up. Speaking of adding up, we're also going to be running Reflections of Lit Jara, and when this enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, which is of course Pirate, and then whenever we cast a spell of the chosen type, we get to copy that spell. So we get copies of our Pirates, and yeah, that can add up to be a lot throughout the game. But of course, we've got plenty of other ways to generate value. First up, we've got Deadeye Tracker, which is very low to the ground at just a single black mana, and it has pay one a black tap, exile two cards from an opponent's graveyard, Deadeye Tracker explores. And speaking of opponent's graveyards, well, we basically have a Snapcaster Mage in some ways for our opponents with Dire Fleet, Daredevil, a two with first strike, and it lets us cast it in Sorcery for an opponent's graveyard, and we can pay mana up, you know, as if it was mana any color to cast it. 
Next up, there's Forerunner the Coalition, which is a tutor for whatever pirate we want out of our entire deck, and that goes on top of our deck. And on top of that, whenever another pirate enters the battlefield our control, it's going to drain our opponent's one. So yeah, this can be a massive card that can help us get the right pirate for the right situation that we're in. And uh, that right pirate might just be Breach's Brazen Plunderer. Breaches has Menace, and whenever one or more pirates we control deal damage to our opponents, exile the top card of each of those opponents' libraries. You may play those cards this turn, you may spend mana or mana of any color to cast those spells. So yeah, this can get a lot of value off the top of our opponents' libraries for us. And speaking of which, there's Ramirez DiPietro, Pillager. First up, when it enters the battlefield, at the cost of two life, we get two treasures, which has a great deal. And secondly, whenever one of our pirates we control deal combination to a player, we exile the top card of that player's library, and we can cast for long as mains exiled, so yeah. That can be a ton of value throughout the game. Speaking of value, Mark to the Drown is just a one-mana spell that can get us back two pirates from our graveyard. And we also have some spells that can help us out with cards like Pirate's Pillage, Big Score, and Unexpected Windfall. Each of these is going to have us discard one card to draw two and make two treasures. And then finally, we're also going to be running Factor Fiction, Read the Bones, and Painful Truths. Factor Fiction is going to have us really top five cards of our library, and opponents separate those into piles, and we get one to our hand and one to our graveyard. Read the Bones has us scry two, draw two, and lose two, and Painful Truths has the potential to have us draw three and lose three. But now that we've talked about card advantage, let's talk about some other ways to get an advantage on our opponents. And that would be with cards like Captivating Crew, Hostage Taker, and Course of Recruiter. Captivating Crew is basically a repeatable threaten effect, pay 3 in a red to threaten a creature, gain control of it temporarily, give it haste, untap it, so yeah, we can just swing out with our opponent's creatures. This can be a great way to really disrupt our opponents. Speaking of disruption, there's Hostage Taker, when enters the battlefield, we exile target artifact or creature until it leaves the battlefield. And we can also cast that spell and spend mana or any color to actually cast the spell. But an even bigger way to gain control of our opponent's things is with Course for Recruiter, which has, whenever it or other pirate enters the battlefield under control, threaten a creature. So yeah, this can threaten a ton throughout the game just for us getting our pirates into play. But even our opponent's hands aren't safe because we can also threaten creatures from there basically with Zara Renegade Recruiter. Zara has flying whenever it attacks, look at defending player's hand, we can put a creature card from it on the battlefield under control, tap and attacking that player planeswalker they control. Now that creature does get returned, but not after it dealt some damage. And then Merchant Raiders is an absolutely incredible card in this deck as well. Whenever any other pirate enters the outfit under control, tap up to one target creature. That creature doesn't untap, it's control or untap step for as long as you control Merchant Raiders. So this can shut down a lot of creatures throughout the game. But we can also just take creatures out with Anthem Mutineer, which has, when it enters the battlefield, eggs up to one target non-Salamander creature. That creature's control creates a 4-3 blue Salamander Warrior creature token. And on top of that, this has Encore, so we can do it again. Well, do each of our opponents. We also have some spells that care about our pirates as well, like Fiery Cannonade, which can deal 2 damage each non-pirate creature, and Crippling Fear, which is going to let us use a creature type, pirate, creatures that aren't the chosen type, pirate, get minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. And finally, we also have other ways to mess with our opponents with Aether Gale, Rivers Rebuke, and Alchemist Retrieval. Aether Gale is going to bounce 6 target non-land permanents, Rivers Rebuke is going to bounce every single non-land permanent one player controls, and Alchemist Retrieval can either bounce one of our things, or one of our opponent's things if we cleaved it. But we're not quite done with throwing a wrench in our opponent's plans just yet. Because we're also going to be running Siren's Ruse to help protect one of our creatures, exile target creature control, and return to the battlefield under its own control, and if a pirate was exiled this way, draw a card. So this can be a great way to protect a creature and to get value out of this as well. Or, you know, we can just counter our opponent's spells with, you know, Negate, Unwind, or Assault Coming. Negate's going to counter target non-creature spell, Unwind's going to do the exact same thing, but we untap to three lands, and Solid Coming can counter any spell, and we can foretell for one in a blue. But now that we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck, let's move on to the lands. First up, there's Command Tower, which can tap for any of our colors. Crumbling Necropolis and Path of Ancestry can as well, but they enter the battlefield tapped. An Exotic Orchard enters untapped and can usually tap for all of our colors. Up next, we've got some lands that can go get other lands when they're sacrificed with Evolving Wilds, Terminal Expanse, River of Tears Overlook, Obscure Storefront, and Maestro's Theater. And those last three actually gain us one life when they do so as well. Moving on, there's Ash Barrens, which has basic land cycling, Mirror Landscape, which we can actually ramp with, and Rogue's Passage, which can make a creature unblockable. And then we've got our three temples, which may enter the battlefield tap, but they're going to have a scry one, and they can tap for two colors. Next up, we're going to be running our bounce lands with Demir Aqueduct, Rakdos Carnarium, and Is It Boilerworks. And finally, we're going to round out our deck with basic lands, with islands, swamps, and mountains. And now that we've talked about every single card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Thank you. 
Like I mentioned at the start of this episode, every single card in this deck is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck. And actually, if you already have the basics for this deck, well, those basics are counted at $0.10 cents a piece in that estimated cost, so there's some extra savings for you there. And speaking of potential savings, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing Heavy Played and Damage cards because, of course, those cards need a home too. Though, do keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.